thank you very much for being here. I know there's a lot of interesting conferences out there. Um, so I have here in my hand one of the greatest problems that we have right now is plastic waste. I know probably all of you is, has heard of it, plastic in the ocean, plastic in the ground. Why is it an issue? Why do we talk about it now? Why so many people are talking about plastic waste? Well, the reason is that we've never made as much plastics as right now. Uh, for, for about 60 years, we've been making plastics, and we've been increasing and increasing our production rates, and now we're having about 300 million tons a year that's take, getting out the gate from those plants, and ultimately, they're swelling in the environment. And the reason why it goes in the environment is because there is very little that's done with it, uh, especially because there's no demand. When, once you're done with your glass of water, nobody wants to buy it and do something else with it because there's no value. And there's no value because there's nobody that wants to get it. Um, PowerWave is a uh, technology company. We've built a modular system that can take this and convert it into a tradable commodity. And then we were able to get extract value from this and, and attract um, demand for the product. To be able to understand what we do, we need to understand how this is made. Uh, plastics, I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of people here don't have necessarily a chemistry degree, but um, uh, this, is a, uh, th this is made of, of plastics, and plastics are chains of molecules. So think of plastics being super long chains of different length, and they have a lot of molecules attached together. And these are building blocks. So you have a, a chain made of many blocks attached together. And the purpose of the big plastic plants and chemical plants is to attach those blocks together and make variable lengths of plastics. And therefore, you have different types of application. This is for a glass, but you may have different lengths for other types of packaging. Um, so what we do at PowerWave, we do the exact opposite. We detach those blocks and recover the blocks. So we release. Uh, the value out of the plastic waste by recovering the building blocks. Uh, at the end of the day, um, if you want to look at it from a different way, you could say that plastic waste is an issue because there is no market for this. And there is no market because there is no value and nobody wants to do anything with it. Whereby when you convert it into a building block, then you release the value and then you can sell it and then you create demand for that material. Um, we're, uh, we're, we're at commercialization phase, so we've been putting about 10 years of work in uh, bootstrapping the technology, literally from nowhere. Uh, we use the power of microwave to decompose the material and get into a very precise cut, and we do not damage the building block. So this is where we get a lot of value from the product. And uh, we are entering into... Um, Two projects, uh, one in Canada, in Sarnia, because this is our chemical hub in Canada. And there's another project that we kick off in Europe as well, because there is a lot of pressure here in Europe for, uh, for the chemical industry to find ways to improve um, end of life of, of polymers. Our business model is fairly simple. We sell equipment. We don't want to be an operator. Uh, there are a lot of people out there that have the supply, that have the expertise in operating uh, waste treatment facility, uh, they, have, um, they have the capital, they have the permits to operate that. Um, you know, dealing with waste is, is a weird business. You, have, you need to have a lot of permits and authorization to be able to handle waste. There, therefore, having um, dealing with people that are already in that business facilitates the growth and, and, and makes it easier for us to grow. Um, we really want it to be a plug-and-play solution, so it fits in a container. It's a containerized solution, essentially plug-and-play, put your plastic in and gets the commodity out. Um, for, for the future, we really want to get into communities. I think the future of waste treatment is being distributed, and this is what we do, because we can empower communities. Uh, so we want to start looking at people interested in developing or funding projects for local communities where you have a lot of material in a disorganized way and you need to structure this kind of infrastructure to get um, uh, the operation of our equipment. Uh, at the end of the day, PowerWave is uh, committed to make the world better uh, by empowering the local communities uh, through closing the loops on our resources. I think the, the big future, uh, the big opportunity for us is really dealing with resource efficiency and I think our solution provides that type of, of tools for the future. Thank you for your attention. I'll be answering your questions.
bringing my own ways with me. <laughs> Thank you. I might start off with the questions. Um, I'm wondering what can government do to help adopt new chemical recycling technologies? There are essentially two or three things they could do. Uh, first thing is uh, eliminate barrier from regulation. As I mentioned, one of the greatest obstacles we face in the waste business is dealing with very old regulation. In the past, uh, governments were really reluctant in heating or doing any thermal treatment of waste because of the air emissions. However, in the past 20 years, uh, the technology evolved. There's a lot that was made now to control emissions and, and make better products. So the one thing that we do a lot is advocacy for changing um, regulation and, and actually changing the interpretation of some uh, regulation points. The other thing they could do is to force a minimum level of recycled content in new polymers. Um, you've seen that in biofuels. Uh, they force, especially in North America, they force a minimum amount of fuel, biofuel, in, in, in fuel content. And, and this fostered and supported the growth of the biofuel industry. And therefore, being able to set a minimum amount of recycled, recycled polymer content in plastics would force uh, and create demand for recycled chemicals. Are there examples of that type of policy in the world and it working? Um, it's, it's, a, it's a new opportunity. Actually, the, the reason why we establish operations in Europe is because it's way more advanced, I feel, than in North America, and especially more than, um, and even more than Canada. So Canada is probably more advanced than North America. However, uh, there's a lot of pressure here in Europe, um, and, and we feel it from the industry. So the industry is very sensitive to, uh, to the fact that they're under pressure, and there's a real pr problem affecting their brand and their, their products, and therefore they have uh, received very strong, com strong uh, demands from the governments to, to find new technologies. And as a matter of fact, there is a group here called Plastics Europe, that has several working groups uh, uh, aiming at identifying new technologies to improve end of life of polymers and specifically being able to return waste back into original applications, which is what we're offering with our technology. All right, any questions from the audience? Yes. Yeah, hi. I would be interested to uh, find out what is the minimum entry level for a community. I'm based in the Philippines. There are a lot of communities looking at the moment at the precious plastic open source system. And uh, what would be the kilowatt hour consumption to get one of ton of product output to estimate the cost and the carbon footprint of your process? Yeah, we certainly can have a, a, a more detailed conversation offline, but um, the, minimum, the, the capacity of our module is about 1,000 tons a year. Um, so it, it, it represent uh, uh, it, it doesn't seem like it's a lot, but it's a lot for, for small communities, for sorting facilities, that's a fair amount of material. Um, in terms of energy, it's electrical powered, so you could tap on renewable energy. Uh, we're interested in partnering as well with uh, developers of, of renewable energy uh, parks. Um, so we could definitely tap into renewable energy on, on your land, but we're talking about a very low amount of energy per ton compared to other uh, pyrolytic technologies because most of our energy, all of the energy is being uh, transferred to the, to the reaction. So we, we can talk about it uh, offline. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Jocelyn, for a very interesting pitch. Please thank Jocelyn from PyroWave.